and welcome to Teal House Farm. If you're new here, I'm Laura. And I'm Sam. And we are Teal House Farm. We live on a 10 acre uh, homestead in central Missouri, working on sustainability and low waste living. We are uh, parents to six little kids as well. And today we're gonna do something a little different that I thought would be really fun. And we are going to uh, react to some viral homesteading TikToks that have been going around. Hopefully have a good laugh and maybe learn a couple of things too. And if you hear some background noise, we apologize. We um, have tried to give all of the children something fun to do, but of course they're always very, very loud. We just so. have a herd of buffaloes upstairs. <laughs> That's all. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. All right, let's watch. Stuart! <coughs> What's wrong? Buddy! Oh gosh. Oh boy. Stuart! Screaming so loud. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. We've had goats for a while. Yes. And they scream, and some sheep now, and they all scream just like that. And how many times have we had to rescue an animal from getting its head into something that it shouldn't have gotten its head into? I don't into? know. I can't even count anymore. They scream just like that, though. It's it, it's kind of funny when it's not your animals doing it constantly every day. <laughs> yeah, some animals, they're just, they're, there's no nice way to put it. They're just dumb. They're just stupid. And they do, like, they'll get stuck in the same spot, like, and then you'll fix that Problem. spot or that problem and then they'll find another spot and I you do, oh, go ahead. i do remember one time uh back when we had trouble keeping our goats in a fence because we didn't know what we were doing our big buck got out and he got his head in a feed bag and he was running around the backyard with the feed bag over his head because he's in there licking the inside and he got his head stuck on the inside right and so. you can be sure too if you tell yourself like we'll be fine as long as the animals don't go in this area, they will always go straight for that area. I they promise. Know. They know. They okay. Do. Number two. Think of things. Come on, brain. Think of things. Come on, brain. Be so smart. How, how much time have we spent trying to figure out how uh, to make way, more ways money? To make money. Uh, a lot. Yeah. Homesteading, it feels like it's a catch-22 because you want to be on your homestead and you want to grow your homestead, but infrastructure and animals cost money at least like when you're getting started you're trying to start that sustainability chain where it kind of this farm is better at sustaining itself which we're slowly getting there but you got to have the money to put in first so we spend a lot of times over time over the last six years trying to figure out ways to make a little extra money without spending all of our time off the farm making money so that we can grow the homestead yeah it's kind of i don't know it's an uphill battle for sure if you can find a place that's kind of like set up already I don't know, maybe that's the way to go, but yeah. Starting from scratch. <laughs> I know, you're like, oh, we want to get that milk cow. And you're like, wait a second, we got to get all of these things before we can get that milk cow. And then you start thinking about how much all of those things are going to cost. Okay, number three. He had an idea. Let's see if it works. Instead of buying a floating duck house, he's filled wood with spray foam. Okay, I'm pausing this one here. How many things have you tried to DIY because you were too cheap to go and buy an uh, actual item? Probably most, <laughs> just about everything. It's like whatever kind of scrap stuff we have laying around, like very few projects have been able to go and buy new materials. I can think of like maybe two projects where I actually went and bought new things for it. And what percentage of the time did you end up just going like, gee, maybe I should have just gone and bought it? Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't say half, but maybe 20% of the time. Okay, and you- <laughs> Anyway, it's really funny too because on the projects where I did buy new stuff, like it goes so much faster because I'm not having to like cut everything down or pull a bunch of nails out and stuff. And so the few times we have bought stuff, Laura's like, oh my goodness. She's like, that went up fast. I'm like, well, yeah, everything's, you know, a two by eight and not not a two by, in, two by 10 that I have to try and split in half and pull out all the bad nails and screws and, you know, whatever. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Okay, and do you think his DIY foam insulated duck house is going to float? I don't know. Since you're asking me, I'd probably say no. But I mean, it's wood, so you'd... I don't know. You'd think it would, but I'm going to say no because... 
this poor man. <laughs> and I feel I feel for this wife. How many times I've been there? You're like, babe, babe, come watch this. I feel and you're for just this like, poor man. you're like, I just, I don't know, babe. <laughs> We're either gonna have a duck house floating on top of our pond. You can tell he's so proud of himself. He is proud, he's of proud of himself. proud of himself. And you just you rooting for him. Moment of truth. Oh, you did it! <laughs> I really wasn't sure. Um, should you have not tied something to it? We'll get it later. Good job! Yay! Check it in an hour. See if it's still there. So the question is, though, they don't show this, but I was curious if the first time a duck tried to get on it, if it just, that kayak uh, yeah, rolled I don't over. Know. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All right, next. Reasons we got runner ducks. They eat slugs, which helps us grow vegetables. They are naturally flightless. The females lay 300 eggs per year. They make us laugh, especially this boy. I wouldn't be careful with my fingers. Their waste compost then fertilizes the garden. They are friendly and social. They are long and upright and funny to watch. A lot of people really like runner ducks just because they're well, first off, they're they're actually pretty easy to find, but I think they're just kind of unique looking, and I think they're good homestead ducks in general. I've thought about getting some, but we, we haven't yet. I thought she said runner ducks because they were running around her backyard. It's an actual breed of duck. Yeah, because it's, like, they're called runner ducks because they're upright. Like, that. Right. yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. They look upright, but... So, uh, one thing I do, uh, we don't have that kind of duck. We do have ducks that, they talked about it, laying, them laying 300 plus eggs a year, and that's one of the reasons we really like our ducks. Because unlike our chickens that, you know, don't lay all year round, the ducks kind of, they always got an egg for you almost every day, which yeah, is I really mean, nice. Yeah, I mean, there is a pro and con to both ducks and chickens. I feel like the chickens do a good job going around your farm. Uh, I mean, they do kind of poop everywhere. But uh, ducks can kind of dig holes and stuff in your yard. And that's kind of the downside of ducks, I feel like. Uh, that and they're just really messy if they get near water like if you just have a little pool of water it will turn into a mud pit like mm -hmm. you you're gonna think pigs are there but they do lay a whole lot of eggs even through the winter they're really really hardy even as babies like the ducklings are way more hardy i feel like than chicks and they're they're a little bit quieter i would say i feel like they're the generally part. maybe it's just breeze we've had we've had a few aggressive chickens I don't know that we have ever had an aggressive duck, male or female. Yeah, not really. I mean, there's some farms that they just do ducks, like they don't really do chickens, and I kind of, I kind of see how that. So we do, do, we that. do both basically. Well, who doesn't like a nice looking chicken? But I like chicken eggs better than duck eggs when it comes to eating like a fried egg. The duck eggs are a lot richer and mm -hmm. heavier, and they excellent for cooking. They do okay in scrambles. They do okay in egg bakes. But when you want just like a fried egg or a sunny side up egg. I don't. Yeah, like they're them great that way. for pancakes or baking. Yeah. They make things really fluffy. The duck eggs do. Okay, next. <laughs> so I put this one up here because I relate to this because you don't realize <clears throat> for some to some degree like just, uh, trying not to get too political but gender roles exist historically just because of size difference like there are so many things i have tried to do on the homestead where i am just physically not big enough to weigh down the equipment or to do like i like it's hard work and it's really manual work and I, some of it i just physically cannot do because i'm not large enough we, we uh this might be too long of a story, but a long time ago we watched a PBS uh, kind of like uh, reality documentary kind of series. And they put people, a bunch of couples up in Canada and have them live like homesteaders. And they're out there trying to, you know, chop all the wood and then they've got a plow. And the one, the, the youngest lady there, she was like, I kind of understand where the gender roles and stuff like happen. She's like... I go out there to plow and she's like, I just can't do it. I'm not heavy enough to get that plow in and I can't hold it in like the guys can. 
Uh, it's not that she's like not good enough or whatever. Right. It's just like physically she wasn't able to do it. Not to say that there aren't some ladies that could. But. And it's not to say that the household work uh, isn't a lot of work. Was a different type of work. And also, I get to make the brownies and lick the bowl while he's outside. So it's true. <laughs> there's some bonuses. <laughs> and obviously, all these you know, this is all issues are much more complicated than just a TikTok. We understand that. Yeah. But I got a laugh out of that one because I related as she was trying to haul that cow to its feet that just did not want to go. I've tried to haul large animals places they did not want to go and they would like basically drag me off my feet because I'm only way so much so. The chicken's name is Crazy Dave. <clears throat> crazy Dave. He looks crazy. We've had some pretty darn aggressive roosters. Uh, they don't last long here. We don't mess with that. Yeah, we've only had a couple, I'd say. Uh, but yeah, like Laura said, they don't last very long. So, we, And we've had a lot of roosters that were great. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, I'd say our first rooster was one of our best. He was... Wallace. Uh, yeah, Wallace. He was awesome. He was a really good... He was a buff Orpington rooster. He was chill so chill it's a hard you want one that's going to be aggressive enough that it's not just going to watch something take all the hens but also you don't want one that's going to chase after your children especially because we let our chickens and ducks kind of free range around the farm so they're just out there um you want it to be aggressive with everything else that like doesn't live on your farm exactly. if it lives on your farm you want it to to you know be respectful and if it doesn't live on your farm, then you want your rooster to go after it. Okay, this is the last one. Yeah, everybody feeding. thinks everybody thinks feeding time is like, well, I guess I, I'd say it was like a Snow White, you know, with her animals and she oh, just Cinderella, Cinderella out there feeding them. Well, no, because they get aggressive. Oh, later that's true. with okay. the mice but snow white sings her pretty little song and the birds just flutter around and help her around the house and it is not like that it's more like cinderella <laughs> where she tosses the feet on the ground the chickens all go wah, 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 everywhere the, her poor little mice can't get the feed like the animal kingdom is ruthless they do not care about each other at all and it's first come first serve and the biggest is going to push the smallest off the food every time <laughs> we have we have one sheep that's still bottle fed the youngest sheep and i and i go over with the bottle and even though all four other animals over there have all been weaned they see me come with that bottle and they all try to make a break for it and i have to get that one sheep out and they're all just like trying to crawl out the fence to get that bottle it's not there's no patient waiting in line yeah animals animals are kind of ruthless uh now sometimes they can be sweet but i, I don't know I guess it's their temperament, some animals. Maybe we just have mean animals. But for the most part, the animal kingdom's not very kind <laughs> if you're uh, weak and small, anyway. It's, it's true. Yeah, that is funny. They they all just go crazy. They do. Okay. That's it, I think. We just thought we'd do something fun for today. That was fun. Thanks for laughing with me. By the way, he hadn't seen any of these. Yeah. I picked them all. They were brand new. Maybe next time I'll have him pick some, and then I'll get okay. to see them for the first That'd time. Be That'd fun. be fun. So thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you soon.